For the final video in this module, we're going to be going through the last of the setup for this rig. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to start by creating IK handles. But we're going to take a look at some of the issues that can come up. For example, when I create this one, you'll notice that it is bending the wrong way, even though I had that offset. Once again, it's because of the way I originally constructed it in a row, and then I offset it. So the way I resolve this is the same way we've resolved the other one. I can set this to negative 90, and then I can come back and create the IK handle, and it reacts in the way that I want it to. Come to this next one, create the next IK handle, and make sure that's going in the right direction. Each time I'm Control Z to undo that. Get this next IK handle. Make sure that that's bending forward in the way I want it to. Uh oh. And I'm seeing an issue. There's something that I missed with the weight painting. So I need to come back and fix that. But that's okay. That's something I can add in afterwards. All right. So come here, grab this one and this one. And now that moves, and it's going the correct direction, so those IK handles are working for me. But uh, let me uh, correct this weight painting issue first. So let me start by selecting the mesh. And then if I open up the tool settings, I know that that needs to be attached into the right leg. So that'll be attached to the right knee. And I could either grab it by a vertice and flood it again or do something of that nature, or I can come in where I know that this is going to be and make sure that I paint that up. But you see the issue that's happening? This is why isolating your selection can be very, very helpful um, because it's actually influencing the things around it. So I'm going to come back and do this again, grab just that vertice, come to the weight painting, and then I'll just do a flood. But I could have equally have done something else. Uh, oh, I still had a little bit left from the previous white painting, so I'll step back before I did that. Oh. Now grab the vertice and go in to paint the weight. Make sure I'm grabbing the right one. Oh, looks like I had some other issues before. So let me correct all of this. And I will hit flood. And then for the ankle below it, I need to make sure that I get just this portion filled, but I can't do that while that's selected. So just to be safe, I'm going to just select everything on this portion. Come here. And then with that left ankle selected, flood that. All right, and so now as I try it out, it should work. So now as I move it up, you see there's no deformations or anything like that. And sometimes it takes just uh, actually moving your rig around to be able to find areas that may have been mistaken. If you notice what I did just there, if it selects in green, that means you're selecting the joint. If you changes it to purple, that shows that the uh, joint chain is kind of a child to the IK handle and it's being controlled by it. So with that, I have these IK handles, but I can't really control a lot. So for example, if I bring this down here to the side, I can't control where that elbow is pointing. And this is where locators come in and can be so helpful. So if I create a locator, I'm going to bring it forward. I'm going to snap it by holding down B for snap to point to right where that join is, control D again uh, to duplicate and then snap to that joint. And then I can grab both of these and holding V, I will bring these up directly in front of the knees, so snapping to right there. And I could have them closer or further or whatever else, but what this allows me to do is if I select that locator and then the IK handle, I can do constrain pull vector. And this allows me to adjust the angle of the knee. So as I move that, you see that that's causing that rotation within the IK handle. 
So let me do it for this other one. Select the locator and then the IK handle, constrain, pull vector. And once again, I can grab this pull vector and make changes. I need to do the same thing for the arms. So I will create a new locator. Uh, once again, I can grab it from either right here or go create locator to do it. Bring this over, snapping the point, put it right in that joint. And then I will bring this up, drop it right behind, and probably move it a little bit closer at this point. And then I can control D to duplicate. And bring this over, oh, didn't duplicate right. So let me see, control D to duplicate. Holding down the V key, bring that over to that joint. And so now with these lined up, once again, I'm gonna select the locator first, and then shift select the IK handle, constrain, pull vector. Select the locator first, shift select the IK handle, constrain, pull vector. And so in this way, now if I grab that IK handle and bring it down here, I can control the angle of the elbow to allow me more motion, more ability to control my animations. So as I move things around with this, I can get the arms to do what I need them to do. All right, I'll step back. So that's the skinny of it. Now, as, as I'm showing you this, this is by no means uh, a complete or good rig. This is now far enough along that I could use it to animate and then even with the foot I can just uh, for the rotation I can just grab the foot if I grab the joint and not the IK handle and I can rotate it to get it in position or I can do this and this is not recommended it is something you can do but it's not generally the best way. Um, I can put an IK handle down to the feet now that's a step up, but only barely from uh, having to grab the joint and rotate it to get it in position, because this allows me to much more quickly uh, set up where I want the foot to be, where I can just move that back and forth. However, this is not ideal. Um, as you continue to progress at looking at rigs and things like that, you'll find that there are better ways to do this. For example, creating a uh, uh, creating a controller that would allow you to control both the movement of the leg with the IK handle as well as having a slider to control the roll of the foot. Um, and so those would be better practices, but once again, this is just an introduction to get you to understand some of these basic concepts of how to create a rig and put it together. Um, if you want to delve further into the subject matter at this point, what I'd encourage you to do is look up some good resources for it. The one that I would recommend the most at this time is this book right here. It's called Rig It Right. It's a little bit older, but it does a really good job of going through step by step and explaining how to set up everything. As you can see, there's uh, the curves that allow you to grab onto it. It's got controls built in. It allows you to set up all of the animation controllers that you need to in ways that make sense for your model. And so this goes up to more of a professional level. Um, and so once again, this gets you kind of a foundation, but if this is something that interests you, it really is a specialty that's in high demand. And so I encourage you to look at additional resources to expand on your, your current knowledge that this is covering. Um, one other thing I want to point out, <clears throat> excuse me, is that although this is in line with the process, because we go through the modeling, UV mapping, texturing, rigging, and then into animation as the pipeline, and so that's why it's in this order, you actually need to understand animation to do better rigging. So in two modules, um, we'll be going through the process of animating a bipedal character and doing a walk cycle. When you do that, um, you're going to see that there are controls and better ways of approaching uh, <laughs> setting up a skeleton. And as you learn how to animate, that's going to help you become better at rigging. So for right now, keep in mind, that's why it's in this order. 
but it would also be good to cover animation first so that you have a better understanding of what you're rigging for. So it's that chicken and egg conundrum, which you do first. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. So as you continue through the modules, when you uh, get through the module, uh, two modules from now, which is uh, doing the walk cycle, I encourage you then to come back and review some of the basic rigging techniques I've covered here, but then also explore on your own some more advanced rigging techniques to really get a grasp and a handle on this. Anyways, that's it for this module, and I hope you enjoyed.